This is concept four, and we are going to dive deeper into human impact on the environment. So again, ecology is the study of relationships between organisms and their environment. And so I'd be remiss if in this unit, we didn't talk about specifically the relationships between humans and the environment. So a couple of words that are kind of buzzwords around like the idea of environmentalism and um, human impact are sustainability and carbon footprint. So sustainability is a balance between Earth's resources, human needs, and the needs of other species. So when we say we're trying to live sustainably, we're trying to live in a way that's balancing our needs, what Earth has to offer, but also what all the other living things on Earth need. That's what it means to live sustainably. And one of the ways we can quantify how we're doing with that is by calculating an ecological footprint or a carbon footprint. And this is just measure, a measurement of the amount of carbon emitted and thus its environmental impact. So this is just an easy way we found to quantify that and see you know, if we're making improvements towards our goal of living sustainably. And a big question to be thinking about as we kind of go through this concept is, is it possible for humans to live sustainably? Is it possible for us to get to the point where we are balancing all these um, things? Because right now, we, our needs are outweighing the resources we have and the needs of other species. And it's working for now, but can it work in the long term? That will be to be determined. So when we talk about Earth's resources, what we're talking about is renewable versus non-renewable resources. Kind of all resources can be divided into those two categories. And the limit of our resources is what really affects our ability to live sustainably. So renewable resources are any resources that are produced or replenished more quickly than they are consumed. Meaning simply, we're not running out of them. We're able to think about like, when you go to the grocery store, you know, there's always like, a ton of like bread on the shelf, okay, then it's that they're replacing it faster than it's being purchased. So you go in, you can always find some bread. Okay, that's a renewable resource. Examples um, would be oxygen, wood, water can be renewable. Any of these can switch at any point and become non-renewable, but sunlight, wind, these are things we're not really like running out of right now. Whereas non-renewable are resources that we're consuming or using more quickly than we're able to like replace them on the shelf. So we're running out of them. It'd be like going to the grocery store and there's no bread in the bread aisle. They haven't been able to restock it fast enough. And these are things like fossil fuels, like coal, oil, and natural gas, um, metals, plastics. These are considered non-renewable resources at this time. Technology has played a significant role in both requiring our need of resources, but also like being a part of the solution. If you remember from unit one, biology basics, um, in concept one, we define technology as the application of scientific discoveries to meet human needs and goals through the development of products and processes. And by doing that, by applying the scientific discoveries to meet our needs and goals, we have contributed to air, water, and land pollution, but we've also provided you know, cleaner energy, waste management, and pollution cleanup. So it kind of goes back and forth. And so we are going to kind of talk through three main categories or types of technology that have had an influence on sustainability and sustainable living in both positive and negative ways. So first is the development of agricultural technology. The overall goal of agricultural tech is to increase food productivity, um, the quantity and the speed with which we can do that. The positives of some of the things we've developed, you know, there's processes like contour farming that help to eliminate erosion and the impacts of erosion. Um, fertilizers have helped us make foods a lot more productively. Irrigation systems, I mean, they've just saved so much time, like the one pictured here. Farming machinery in general, like plows and things like that, have been game changers. Cons, well, one is fertilizers. It's a pro and a con. It, fertilizers create... Artificial fertilizers create excess nitrogen that wouldn't normally be there, and it really alters the chemistry of the soil and can really, really, really negatively impact the environment, especially if it becomes a part of runoff and gets into a 
body of water. Farming machinery too runs on fossil fuels, runs on gas, it runs on oil, and um, those are non-renewable resources, things we're running out of. And also they create pollution through combustion and adding carbon dioxide to the environment. So those are some of the great things about ag tech, but then some of the things that have been challenges too. Another category of technology that's had a huge impact on sustainability is alternative technology. And the goal here is to provide clean energy to power society without negatively influencing the atmosphere. So I put the word clean in quotations only because it's kind of impossible to make anything entirely clean um, without some sort of like carbon emission or some sort of negative impact. But overall, it's doing way better, more, way less harm or way more good than it is harm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a little second time. So some of the pros of alternative energy tech are decreasing the burning of fossil fuels. Um, relying, this allows us to rely on renewable resources rather than the non-renewable ones like that. Um, and But some of the cons are it's expensive. You know, We're having to build a lot of infra infrastructure for solar panels and for windmills that doesn't normally exist. So we're having to create funds for that. Also, the use of nuclear energy creates radioactive waste and until we get to the point where we can you know mimic what the sun does um it's good there's going to be radioactive waste created and that's definitely an issue industrial technology the goal of all industrial technology is to increase manufacturing efficiency increase transportation and increase communication so we can get places faster get things faster and send information faster pros are in the last like several decades even, not even like an entire century, even just a few decades. The speed at which communication has improved, transportation, and industries have been able to like decrease manufacturing costs is crazy. Like it, it is exponential, the growth of this industry in that way. And this is pictured in oil and gas refinery, by the way, um, which are both fossil fuels. Cons though are... The creation of CFCs, which are chlorofluorocarbons, uh, from foam packing material and refrigerant, which is a big part of a lot of um, industry things that are made. The problem with CFCs is they deplete the ozone layer, which has an impact on global warming, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Also, most industrial tech relies on the burning of fossil fuels, which increases greenhouse gases and produces acid rain, which is a serious issue with pollution. The acid rain lowers soil pH, it sucks the nutrients out of soil, and it changes aquatic pH too, and makes it hard for aquatic ecosystems to thrive. Now, I mentioned greenhouse gases and depleting the ozone layer. We have to know what the greenhouse effect is, because this is just a straight up phenomenon that happens. The greenhouse effect is the normal warming effect when gases trap heat in the atmosphere. This is how greenhouses work when people make greenhouses and it's how earth works. So essentially, sun shines solar energy on earth and there's a natural wall of gases in the atmosphere and water vapor out there that when sun shines on earth, heat, some of the heat gets absorbed, some gets reflected back, and gets out and then some gets trapped in because of these gases and it is critical because it maintains the temperature of earth life is able to exist on earth because earth is at the core temperature that it is so the fact that greenhouse effect happens is critical it's how we're able to live here because of the maintenance of earth's temperature now greenhouse gases are like normal things carbon dioxide oxygen methane water um, and they trap energy to maintain our temperature range by preventing heat from escaping the atmosphere so it stays trapped in there. Now, the problem is if too much heat gets trapped in, and that's where the phenomenon of global warming occurs. So there's two kind of two main parts to this. One is that CFCs deplete the ozone layer, so more sun is getting in than it should. So there's more allowed in if the ozone layer is depleted. And... Then there's more that's trapped in if greenhouse gases increase. So burning fossil fuels through the process of combustion releases excess CO2 into the atmosphere, which increases the amount of greenhouse gases, which increases kind of that layer that's holding heat in, which will increase Earth's overall temperature. So that's kind of our two-part. We're letting too much in, and then we're keeping too much in. 
um, and that's causing global warming. Humans have also had an impact on biodiversity, which we um, defined in an earlier concept as basically how much variation there is on Earth, the total amount of variation of life on Earth. And a high biodiversity reflects a healthy ecosystem. But humans have threatened that over the years, especially in recent decades. We destroy habitats. Um, pollution affects the way that species are able to survive. We've introduced invasive species, which are non-native species that get introduced in an ecosystem and then end up negatively harming it. For, so, for example, um, water hyacinth is pictured here. It's an invasive species in a lot of areas where it's been introduced. And what happens is it forms these really dense colonies and they end up blocking out sunlight. And so native aquatic species underwater don't get the sunlight they need, so they can't photosynthesize, and thus they end up dying. So these are just a couple of examples of how humans impact the environment, and I think you're going to learn a lot more about our impact through the Human Impact Project experience. So I hope you enjoy that, and it um, opens your eyes to a little bit of how we impact the Earth.